in the darkest shadows, in the white cold, fearlessly search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tomes, the order, the order of the Abercast. We are the brave and bold. The Ages begins with the shocking story of Cain and Abel and the journey of violence and revenge spanning thousands of years, following Cain through his cursed life from an ancient invasion of malicious angels to the American Revolutionary War. A masterful, compelling journey through time, the Ages delves deep into arcane knowledge, myth, and legend. The art is stunning. And the story takes you on a journey where mortals, immortals, angels, and demons are all forced to deal with the folly that is God's creation. It's a beautifully dark and gritty ride through history. This four-part story follows the astrological procession of the ages and how each 2,500-year age parallels major changes in the development of Earth's inhabitants. Cain's blasphemous struggle with the divine and sacred tyrant God will create and crumble empires, shape history, and cause a cosmic cataclysm. This work of Solomon is divided into two books. In the first, thou mayest see and know how to avoid errors and experiments, operations, and in the spirits themselves. In the second, thou art taught in what manner magical arts may be reduced to the proposed object and end. It is for this reason that thou shalt shouldest thou shouldest to take great heed and care that this key of secrets fall not into the hands of the foolish, the stupid, and the ignorant. <clears throat> For he who is the possessor hereof, and who availeth himself hereof, according to the ordinance herein contained, will not only be able to reduce the magical arts herein unto their proposed end, but will, even if he findeth certain errors herein, be able to correct them. Any art or operator of this kind will not be able to attain its end unless the master of the art or exorcist shall have this work completely in his power. That is to say, unless he thoroughly understand it for without this, he will never attain the effect of any operation for this reason. I earnestly pray and conjure the person unto whose hands this key of secrets may fall, neither to communicate it, nor to make it any one partaker in this knowledge. If he be not faithful or capable of keeping a secret, nor expert in the arts, and I most humbly entreat the professor of this, the ineffable name of God in four letters, Yod, Hey, Vo, Hey. And by the name Adonai, and by the other most high and holy names of God, this he values this work as dearly as his own soul, in that he makes no foolish or ignorant man a partaker therein. Let's prefer a note, book two of the Key of Solomon.
The Abercast. Occult. History. Conspiracy. Violence. Welcome to the Abercast. I'm your home. I'm your professor for the evening. Your exorcist professor of the evening, <laughs> John. Um, uh, got a big show, so I don't want to spend a lot of time dicking around. So I like to encourage everyone to rate and review on iTunes. Please. Uh, I'd like to, for you guys to visit Patreon. We're trying to uh, get a books for soldiers program started uh, also i'm looking for a reason to print the oath on uh, some mason jars so we can all f- drink together during when you listen to the show so go visit that uh website website is important um there's social media links at the bottom you go to stigmata studios.com or abercast.com and we started a new feature it's not really a new feature anymore but we have a feature on there that's super important especially for episodes like this it's called the featured topics section so instead of me wasting time every episode trying to remember all the episodes that the topic we're tackling links into uh you could just go find them streaming right there uh on the on the website again it's abercast.com and you you'll see the little button for the feature topic section uh so if you go there this week you will see uh the key the key of solomon and they'll all be streaming um They'll be streaming or there'll be like links to, you know, all your favorite podcast fucking places and the names of the episodes will be right there. So if you want to go and download them wherever you get your podcasts at or whatever, it's like a list, but it, you can also stream right from there. So the three episodes that deal with the lesser key of Solomon will be on there. Um, some other, you know, whatever I'll, I'll figure it all out, but you go there, find the linked, uh, uh, items. So when I did the Lesser Key of Solomon episodes, I had a person say, you know, you should have uh you should have a warning at the beginning of your episodes that you do this kind of stuff. Letting, you know, just letting people know that they shouldn't be screwing around with demons. You know, if you listen to any paranormal podcast, <laughs> the host will always be like, well, you know, you don't want to mess around with demons. Don't stop. We're not saying don't summon any demons here. I don't tell you guys shit. <laughs> um I don't, I do not and will not issue a warning uh, when doing these magic demon summoning episodes. And I think I made my point of view pretty clear in, I think, the last of those Lesser Key of Solomon episodes where uh, I think that this stuff is more a function of, uh, I don't know, depth psychology than actually, you know, summoning fucking entities from dark, chaotic realms. <laughs> I think it's more along the lines of uh, plumbing your subconscious. Uh, It's more along the lines of imaginative play. You know, I think that's something that's missing in our world right now is imaginative play. And and I'm not saying it's not serious. I think it's very serious uh, imaginative play. And I'm not saying that it's not dangerous. It's just not dangerous in a supernatural or paranormal sense. It's dangerous like, you know, people act like these old books and like reading these things is like treated like a loaded gun. You know, and I'm saying that I'm sure they're, they could be dangerous. They could be dangerous if you're not, you know, managing your experta- expectations like a normal fucking human person. Or uh, they could certainly be dangerous if you become obsessed with this stuff. Like any abuse or any addiction could be dangerous to you. There is tons of material on this subject, but I think uh, Dion Fortune addressed it the best as anyone uh, she was uh, from the 1890s to 1946. Uh, she was a trained psychoanalyst who became a magician. She became a Kabbalist and a member of the Golden Dawn. And, uh, you know, it was Fortune's psychoanalytic 
pro- uh, practice that fostered her interest in the workings of the human psyche. And her conclusions led her to believe in reincarnation and to accept the possibility of occult phenomenon. And she eventually found that psychology provided an insufficient explanation for phenomenon encountered in some of her casework. She said, Dr. Young has a great deal to say concerning the myth making facility of the human mind or faculty of the human mind. And the occultist knows uh, it to be true. He also, uh, he knows also, however, that its implications are much farther reaching than uh, psychology has yet to suspect. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not clutching my purse when, you know, when I'm sitting, I'm not, <laughs> no, I don't have a purse. I'm not clutching my, I don't know, European carry all, you know, telling you guys not to mess around with this stuff because I believe it, it does help. And I believe it is about using your, your imagination and, playing on some on some level and i think that i think that we need that you know i think you could go forth into the this world of goetic magic and high ritual magic and your soul is going to be just fine you're going to be just fine you know (laughs) that um that's it okay so (laughs) with that being uh, said You know, not ta- I'm not trying to take the piss out of the subject or the topic. It's still fascinating, however you choose to look at it. But look, hey, if you think that you can read some, turn off all the lights, <clears throat> throw some candles on, read some old books, and uh, you, if you think you can summon a demon and keep him into check with smelly incense and you command them into into teaching you how to learn bird language then you know more power to you just be that much more cautious when you're drawing your circles and you're obeying the rules that we're gonna be talking about tonight okay that's all i'm saying i don't i'm now i'm trying to backpedal because i don't want any (laughs) i don't want any I don't want any diabolical. I don't want any sinister litigation to come against, <laughs> come against me. I was um, doing some reading on the satanic panic in the eighties today. And I'm like, Oh yeah, maybe I should just delete this whole part. Out. So the, this key of Solomon, the key of Solomon, the King is translated by our old, our old friend, McGregor Mathers and is divided into two books, book one and book two. Book one is full of spells and incantations and experiments for the wizard, or as this book refers to it, the exorcist, uh, to do during the operations. They refer to these rules and these protocols that are located in book two. So as we get into this, uh, talking about this, this book, we are actually going to start with book two and move into book one. Uh, it sounds weird, but just bear with me, please, because, you know, you know, we've come this far. We've come this far, my dear friends. Just trust me. Just trust me. We've come this far. So, uh, like the lesser key of Solomon, it's all about, you know, I already kind of said, it's all about summoning demons to do your will and, uh, ask questions or to help you out. And just like the lesser key, everything has to be just so this book talks a lot about, uh, doing things at the right time, not just of the day, but of the hours and the virtues of the planet. But we're just going to put a pin in that because we're going to come back to it later. And we're eventually circle back around, around to it. So let's jump into this book too. At what hour after the chapter one, at what hour after the preparation of all things necessary, we should bring the exercise of the art to perfection. Uh, That's not bullshit. That's the name of the chapter. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, so it then happen. Should it then happen that thou hast undertaken any secret operation for conversing with conjuring or conjuring spirits in which the day and the hour are not marked, but thou, uh, thou shalt put it in execution on the days and hours of Mercury at the 16th and 23rd hour, but it will be still better than the eighth. 
which is the third of the same night, which is called and means before the morning. For then thou shalt be able to put to practice all the arts and operations which should be performed. According as it is, shall please thee by day or by night, provide that they have been prepared at the hours suitable to them. As hath already been said, but when neither hour nor time of operation or invocation is specified, it is then much better to perform these experiments at night, seeing that there is more easy to the spirits to appear in the peaceful silence of night dur than during the day. And thou shouldest inevitably observe... <laughs> That wishing to evoke these spirits, either by day or by night, it is necessary that it should be done in a place hidden, removed, secret, convenient, and proper for such art. Where no man frequenteth, frequenteth or inhabiteth, <laughs> as we shall relate more fully in its place. If then... Thou shouldest operate touching anything that had been stolen in whatever way it be performed in whatever way it uh, may have been prepared. It is necessary to practice it on the hours on the days and hours of the moon being if possible in her increase and from the first unto the eighth hour of the day. So skipping ahead a little bit worse. Remember, we're still talking about time. But if the operation be regarding invisibility, they should be put in practice at the first, second, and third hour of Mars by day, but if by night until the third hour. <laughs> so it just goes on this way. Uh, if they be operations seeking love, grace, or favor, they should be performed under the eighth hour of the same day, commencing with the first hour of the sun, and from the first hour of Venus. Venus! Rocket number nine until un, unto the first hour of the same day of, of Venus. As for operations of destruction and desolation, we should pra uh, practice and put them into the execution on the day of Saturn at the first hour, or rather at the eighth or fifteenth of the day, and from the first until the eighth hour of the night. Experiments of games, royalty, deceit, illusion, and invisibility ought to be done at the first hour of Venus. And at the eighth hour of the day, but by the night and the third and at the seventh. At all times, practicing and putting into execution magical arts, the moon should be increasing in light and in an equal number of degrees with the sun. And it is much better from the first quarter to the opposition. <clears throat> and the moon should be in a fiery sign, and notably uh, in that of the ram or of the lion. So as this chapter goes, he actually talks a little bit about the, the nature of these spirits. Uh, he says it is nevertheless necessary to take care that when thou shalt when thou shalt have prepared any experiment thyself for the days and hours ordained it should be performed in clear serene mild and pleasant weather without any great tempest or agitation of the air which should not be troubled by winds for when uh, thou shalt have conjured any spirits in any art or experiment they will not come when the air is troubled or agitated by winds, seeing that spirits have neither flesh nor bones and are created of different substance. Some are created from water, others from wind unto which they are like. Some from earth, some from clouds, others from solar vapors, others from the keenness of strength. Uh, keenness and strength of fire and when they are invoked or summoned they will always come with a great noise with a terrible nature of fire then the spirits which are created of water are invoked they come with great rains 
thunder, hail, lightning, thunderbolts, and the like. And when the spirits which are created of clouds are invoked, they come with great deformity in a horrible form to strike fear into the evoker and with an exceedingly great noise. Others which are formed from wind appear like unto uh, and with exceeding swift motion in whatsoever those uh, which are created from beauty appear, they will show themselves in a fair and agreeable form. Moreover, whensoever thou shalt call the spirits created from the air, they will come with a kind and gentle breeze. So goes on to say, take heed, <clears throat> take heed further that every time that thou performest any experiment to reduce it into perfection uh, with the requisite 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 solemnite solemnites thou shall uh, recom recompense the former experiment if interrupted therein without the preparation of hours and other solemnities solemnities <laughs> If by chance it should happen that the perform that the that having performed an experiment with due observance of the days, hours, and requisite soul um, entities, thou shalt find it unsuccessful. It must be in some manner false, ill arranged, and defective, and thou must assuredly have failed in some manner. For if thou dost ill in one single point, these experiments or these arts will not be verified. Thus upon this chapter dependeth the whole key of arts, experiments, and operations. And although every solemnity, <laughs> boy, I hope they don't keep doing this, be rightly observed, no experiment will be verified unless thou canst penetrate the meaning of this chapter. So he's saying, look at your watch, bros. Look at your watch. You got to know what time it is. What fucking time is it? Chapter two. In what manner... The master of the art should keep rule and govern himself. He who wisheth to apply himself unto so great and so difficult the science shall have in his mind free from all business and from all extraneous ideas of whatever nature they may be. He should be... He should then thoroughly examine the art or operation in which he should undertake and write, if regularly, out on paper particularly set aside for that purpose uh, with the appropriate conjurations and exorcisms. If there be anything to mark or write down, it should be performed in the manner specified regarding the paper, ink and pen. <clears throat> we have chapters on all of these things later. Uh, we should also observe that what day and at what hour this experiment should be undertaken again with this time, all the time, <laughs> uh, uh, and what things are necessary to prepare for it and what should be added and what can be dispensed with. <clears throat> so I'd like to take this moment, uh, because I failed to before, uh, to invite you guys to pour a weapon of mass distraction out right now. I want you to get a mason jar. It can be clean. It can be dirty. I don't care. <laughs> Fill it up with ice cubes and gin and some uh, tonic water. Throw a slice of lime in there and uh, raise a glass for our old King Solomon. So this explains how the exorcist... Uh, strips down and bathes and he s says O Lord Adonai who hast formed me thine unworthy servant in thine image and resemblance of, vi of vile and abject earth deign to bless and to sanctify this water so that it may be for health and purifications of my soul and of my body so <clears throat> that no foolishness or deceitfulness may therein in any way have place O oh, most powerful and ineffable god who madest thy people pass dry shod through the red sea when he came upon the land of egypt grant unto me <clears throat> grace that i may be purified 
and regenerated from all my past sins by this water so <laughs> that so no uncleanliness may appear upon thy presence and he is instructed uh, hereafter for three days at least you shall abstain from all idle, vain, and impure reasonings, and from every kind of impurity and sin, as will be shown in the chapter of fast and of vigil. Each day sh sh thou shalt recite the following prayer, at least once in the morning, twice about noon, and thrice in the afternoon, four times in the evening, and five times before laying down and going to sleep. This shall do... On three ensuing days, <clears throat> here's the prayer. Haracho, Asak, Asakro, Bedrimiwell, Tilath, Aberones, Irelhelem, Idiadak, Arkarazel, Zophiel, Blautel, Barakta. Edoniel, Elohim, Imargo, Abragath, Samuel, Samuel, Gra, Geb, Rahael, Kadatio, Ira, Elohai, Aksa, Ebisha, Emekadel, Daniel, Dama, Elamos, Ezekiel, Baal, Segron, Gamon, and Demas. O Lord God, who art set upon the heavens, and who regardest the abysses beneath, grant unto me thy grace, I beseech thee, so that what I conceive in my mind I may accomplish in my work. Through thee, O God, the sovereign ruler of all, who livest and reignest unto the ages of the ages, amen. Then just as he, <clears throat> he just has to chill after he does all this. He just got to chill until the hour is right for his experiment. Chapter three is, uh, goes on to, it's how the exorcist's companions or his minions or acolytes should conduct themselves. There's a lot of bathing and gathering of magical items. Uh, chapter four is concerning the fasting, uh, care and the things to be observed. And there's a pregame conjuration, the conjuration. Come on. <laughs> this Southern Baptist preacher voice is funny. <laughs> to me, at least. O oh Lord God, the Almighty, be proptuous unto me, a miserable sinner. For I am not worthy to rise mine eyes unto heaven because of the iniquity of my sins and the multitude of my faults. O oh, pitying and merciful Father, who wouldest not the death of a sinner, but rather than he should turn from his wickedness and live? O oh God, have mercy upon me and pardon all of my sins, for I, unworthy, entreat thee, O oh Father of all creatures, thou who art full of mercy and of compassion, by thy great goodness, thou deign to grant unto me the power to see and to know these spirits which I desire to behold, and to evoke to appear before me and to accomplish my will. Thou, thee who art creator and who art blessed unto the ages of the ages, amen. O Lord God, thy Father eternal, who art seated upon the cherubim and the seraphim, who lookest upon the earth and upon the sea unto thee I do raise my hands and implore thine aid alone. Thou who alone art the accomplished mint <laughs> of good works. Thou who has given rest unto those who labor and who hum 
uh, who humblest the proud, and who art the author of life and the destroyer of death. Thou art our rest, thou art our protector of those who evoke thee. Protect, guard, and defend me in this matter and this enterprise which I propose to carry out. O thou who livest, reignest, and abidest unto the eternal ages. Amen. During... During, I'm sorry, we're moving out of the prayer, I think, (laughs) or the conjuration. During the last three days before the commencement of this action, thou shalt content thyself with only eating fasting diet. And thou only once in the day, and it shall be better still if thou only partakest of bread and water. Thou shalt also abstain uh, from every impure thing, reciting the prayer above written. And on the last day, when thou shalt wish to commence the operation, thou shalt remain all day without eating. And later, uh, thou shalt go into a secret place, where thou shalt confess all thy sins unto God with a contrite heart. The disciple also, together with the master, shall recite the same confession, but with a low and distinct voice. As hath been already said in the first book. This having been done thrice in a devout, pure, and contrite heart, in a place withdrawn from men, cleansed and pure, where thou canst, where thou canst be seen taking the water and the hyssop, thou shalt say, Purify me, O Lord, with the hyssop, and I shall be pure, or wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. After this, bathe thyself with the exercised water, and clothe thyself again with the concentrate, consecrated garments which thou hast taken off. Searcy thyself and surround thyself with odors as well uh, as will be told farther on when we speak on perfumes and suffumigations. <clears throat> so we go, oh, here, hold on. Ba-ba-ba-bum. Dun-dun-dun. <sniffs> So the book continues on. Chapter 5 is about these baths. <laughs> and uh, chapter 6 is about the garments and shoes of the art. And chapter 7, where you do it, how you choose the places. And Chapter 8. Oh, here we go. I should have brought my sword down here. Of the knife, sickle, point hard, dagger, lance, wand, staff, and other instruments. This is chapter 9. That'll do. In order to properly carry out the greatest and most important operations of the art, various instruments are necessary, as a knife with a white hilt, another with a black hilt, a short lance wherewith to trace circles and characters, and other things. The knife with the white hilt should be made in the day and the hour of Mercury, when Mars is in the sign of the ram or of the scorpion. It should be dipped in ooh, the blood of a gosling. So, I'm going to take a second here to say, like, a lot of people diss this book. A lot of people don't like the uh, the greater key keys of Solomon. Because they talk, they talk about using blood, uh, and a lot of tradition, a lot of traditional magicians and whatnot think that the second that you bring blood into one of these operations, it becomes evil or sinister. 
I am like, I don't know. <laughs> I, especially when I was doing the Libra three challenge, I shed a lot of blood and I, I was okay with it. Like I, <laughs> it did, I didn't ever really got hurt or, you know, I didn't ever feel like what I was doing was evil. So I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this has been, this book has been published a few times and one of the times it was published, the editor said that he actively took out a bunch of blood stuff, but some of it survived and I actually have access to two copies of this. I have access, I have, I own a book, uh, that, that this is included in. And then I also went to sacred texts dot com and i uh was also doing research there as well so there i was able to find some blood stuff in here all right so i gotta get back where'd i leave it it should be dipped in the blood of a gosling and in the juice of the pimpernel and the moon being at her full or increase in light dip it also into the white hilt upon which thou shalt engrave the characters shown afterwards perfume it with the with the perfumes of the art with this knife thou mayest perform all necessary operations of the art except the circles but if it seemeth unto thee too troublesome to make a similar knife have one made in the same fashion and thou shalt place it thrice in the fire until it becometh red hot and each time thou shalt immerse it in the aforesaid blood and juice, fasten it there unto the white hilt, having engraved thereon the aforesaid characters. And upon the hilt thou shalt write with a pen of the art, commencing from the point and going forward to the hilt, the name Agla, on as shown in f figure 61. Uh, this is a podcasting is not a visual medium so i don't know how to per i don't know how to describe these <laughs> these different scribbles and sigils and stuff afterwards thou shalt perform i'm sorry perfume and sprinkle it and wrap it in a piece of silken cloth but for the knife with the black hilt for making circles therewith to strike terror and fear into the spirits. It should be made in the same manner, except that it should be done in the day and hour of Saturn and dipped in the blood of a black cat and in the juice of hemlock and the characters and names shown being written thereon from the point towards the hilt, which being completed, thou shalt wrap it in a black silk cloth. The scimitar and the sickle are made in the same way <clears throat> as also the dagger, the point yard, and the short lance. In the day and hour of Mercury, they should be dipped in the blood of a magpie, in the juice of the herb Mercury. Thou, <clears throat> thou must make for them handles of white boxwood cut at a single stroke from the tree and ri in the rising of the sun <clears throat> with a new knife or with any other convenient instrument. The character shown should be traced thereon and there shall uh, perfume them accordingly to the rules of the art and wrap them in silk cloth like the others. The staff shall be of elder wood or cane or rosewood and the wand of hazel or nut tree. In all cases, the wood being virgin, that is of one year's growth only. See, this is dark. This is a dark path too. <laughs> this whole thing. We're going to get into this probably in the next episode, looking at the time. But uh, we talk about parchment and it, it it's it's we like it's got a weird overtone or undertone to it they should each be cut from the tree at a single stroke on the day of mercury at sunrise and the character shown should be written or engraved thereon on the day and hour of mercury this being done thou shalt say Adonai, the most holy deign to bless and to consecrate this wand and this staff that may obtain the necessary virtue through thee, O most holy Adonai, whose kingdom undureth until the ages of the ages. Amen. 
and having perfumed and consecrated them, put aside in a pure and clean place for use when required. The swords are also frequently necessary for use in the magical arts. <clears throat> now, we know this from our Babylon working episode. When, when Jack Parsons is <laughs> he's chasing a demon around his <laughs> around his mansion with the magic sword. <clears throat> thou shalt therefore take a new sword, which thou shalt clean and polish on the day of Mercury, and at the first or fifteenth hour. And after this, thou shalt write on one side of these divine names in Hebrew, yod Hey vau Hey, adonai Yai. I really need to find out how to pronounce that one, because whenever I do it, I just crack myself up. ya ya And on the other side, Elohim Gibor. Sprinkle and sense it and repeat it over with the following con... con- Conjuration. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. I have a black bladed katana that I do, you know, yard work and I take <laughs> and, and I take camping with me. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. <clears throat> I conjure thee, O sword, by these names, Abrik, 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 Kadabra, yod hey, vau hey. <clears throat> thou that thou that thou serve me for strength and defense in all magical operations against all mine enemies, visible and invisible. I conjure thee anew by the holy and indivisible name of El, strong and wonderful. By the name Shaddai Almighty, and by the names Kadach, 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 Adonai, Elohim, Seboeth, Emmanuel, and the first and last, Wisdom, Way, Life, Truth, Chief, Speech, Word, Splendor, Light, Sun, Fountain, Glory, and Stone of the Wise, Virtue, Shepherd, Priest, Mazakai, immortal, by these names then, and by the other names, I conjure thee, O sword. And thou servest me for protection in all adversaries. Amen. <laughs> this being finished, <laughs> this being finished, thou shalt wrap it in a silk like all the other instruments being duly purified and consecrated uh, by the ceremonies requisites. Uh, and perform the magical operations. Uh, it goes on to say that three other swords should be made for the use of your disciples or your acolytes. I'm going to forget that's there. I'm going to cut the fuck out of myself. <clears throat> the first one okay this is the three other swords that should be made for use for the disciples the first one should have on the pommel the name cardiel or gabriel on the lemon of the guard region of the blade panorum hamesson on the second shall have on the pommel the name oriel on the lemon of the guard, Sarion, and on the blade, Gamorinda Balin. Gamorinda Balin. Oh. The third should have on the pommel the name Damiel or Raphael. And on the lemon of the guard, Yemeton. And on the blade, Lamedin Iridin, Iridim. The burin or graver is useful for engraving or incising characters in the day and hours of Mars or of Venus. Venus, thou shalt engrave thereon the character shown, and having sprinkled and sensed it, uh, thou shalt repeat it over with the following prayer. The prayer, Asaphael, Asaphael, Asaphael. 
Pentagrammatron, Pentagrammaton, Athiathos, Ea, Asher, Ea, Kadosh, 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 O oh God, Eternal and my Father, blessed and this instrument prepared in thine honor, so that it may only serve for good use and end for thy glory, amen. Having again perfumed, thou shalt put it aside for use, and the needle may be re-consecrated in the same way. All right, we're going to get into this is uh, chapter nine of the formation of the circle. Having chosen a place in preparing and constructing the circle and all things necessary being prepared for the perfection of the operations, thou take thou the sickle or scimitar of the art and stick it into the center of the place where the circle is to be made. Then take a cord of nine feet in length, fasten one end of there of to the sickle with the other end trace out to the circumference of the circle, which may be marked either by the sword or by the knife with the black hilt. Then with remember the white hilt knife can't draw a circle for some reason. It's got, it's got to be the knife with the black hilt. <laughs> then with this within the circle, mark out four regions, namely towards the East, West, South and North wherein place symbols and beyond the limits of this circle describe with the consecrated knife or sword, another circle, but leaving an open space therein towards the North, whereby thou mayest enter and depart beyond the circle of art. Beyond this again, thou shalt describe another circle at a foot distance with the aforesaid instruments after yet Yet ever leaving therein an open space for an entrance and egress corresponding to the open space already left in the other. Beyond this, make another circle at another foot distance and beyond these two circles, which are beyond the circle of art. Yet upon the same center, <laughs> thou shalt describe uh, pentagrams with symbols and names of the creator. Therein, so that they may surround the circle already described. Without these circles, thou shalt circums circumscribe a square, and beyond that, another square. And the angles are formed may not touch in the centers of the sides of the ladder. We really need a diagram for this fucking thing. And that, and that the angles of the ladder may stretch towards the four quarters of the universe, east, west, north, and south. And the four angels of each square touching them now shall describe lesser circles wherein let uh, there be placed standing censers with lighted charcoal and sweet odors. These things being done, let the magus of art assemble his disciples, exhort, confirm, and cheer them, lead them to the circle of art, and station them therein towards the four quarters of the universe. Exhort them to fear nothing and to abide in their lead or into their assigned places. Furthermore, furthermore, let each of the companions have a sword besides the sword of art, which he must hold naked in his hand and let the Magus, uh, quit the circle and kindle the censers and place therein exercised incense. Uh, as it is said in the chapter of fumigations, the chapter of fumigations, <laughs> that reminds me of the book of armaments. <laughs> um, and let him have the censer in his hand and kindle it and then place it in part prepared. Let him now enter within the circle and carefully close the openings left in the same and let him again warn his disciples to take the trumpet of art prepared as said in the chapter concerning the same and let him incense the circle towards the four quarters of the universe. After this, let the Magus commence, 
uh, commence his incantations, having placed the sickle, sword, and other implements of art upright in the ground at his feet, and having surrounded the trumpets as before, taught let him evoke the spirits, and if he needed to conjure them, as is said in the first book, and having attained his desired effect, let him license them to depart. Here followeth the form of the circle, wherein whoever entereth shall be at uh, safety as within the f a fortified castle, and nothing shall be able to harm him. All right, well, I'm just going to, uh, we're actually going to wind up stopping here. So this will be, uh, I'll do a part two. I'll do a part two to get through the rest of this uh, section of the book. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, we're finding a lot of new listeners, so I dig that. I want to uh, encourage everyone to rate and review on iTunes to help the show out, please. You're probably already on there, and it doesn't cost you anything, except for a couple minutes of time. Uh, I'd like to also encourage everyone to check out the Patreon backslash Abercast, I think it is. Uh, we got... A bunch of great stuff just waiting to happen over there. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a ton of great uh, exclusive audio you can't find anywhere else there. Uh, the website, stigmatastudios.com or abercast.com. You can find all the links to my social media at the bottom there. That's cool. And then also there's that feature topic section if you want to hear more about you know, like the lesser keys of Solomon, like just there be some at the, some of the other magic stuff that we've done on the show will be available for streaming right there, or it'll help you find it on whatever pod catcher that you dig. You dig it the most, whatever pod catcher you dig it the most. I am John. I'm your home boy, John. This has been your favorite podcast, the Abercast. And, uh, this is me saying good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Stay tuned. The part two episode will drop shortly after this, and uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get rolling. And uh, so, thanks. Here we go. Uh, right after this, will be uh, Soda Jerk, fucking fight, our favorite song. <laughs> Vienna, 1683. Today is September 11th, 1683. The mighty army of the Ottoman Empire led by the savage and radical terror troops of the Dar al-Harb surround the walled city of Vienna and begin a siege to break the golden apple of Europe and kill, enslave, or convert all of its inhabitants. The valiant citizens stand against the tyrannical army with the steadfast leadership of Count Ernst Rüdiger von Stromberg the help of the ever-living rebel, Cyrus, the dead guy, and the hopes of the faraway King Jan Sobieski III and his army of flying hussars. The Vienna 1683 comic is available right now from Stigmata Studios at stigmatastudios.com and on indieplanet.us. The Non-Standard Squad, 1944 World War II Three weird American soldiers are on a search and rescue mission into the oldest and darkest regions of Europe. A cursed ever-living warrior, Cyrus the Dead Guy. An experimental war bot, Sergeant Lane McCord. An all-red axe, mysterious rogue with a demon-possessed arm come face to face with an army of magically corrupted machine-obsessed elves a magic hammer wielding Norse Ubermensch, and a Nazi wizard who was a member of the ancient Dark Order of the Shiny Hexagon. The Non-Standard Squad 1944 comic is available right now from Stigmata Studios at stigmatastudios.com and on indieplanet.us. <laughs> <laughs>